Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to just sit down and chat with you guys, do a chatty get ready with me, but also trying new products. I have sort of a random mixture of new stuff, like the Lisa Eldridge eyeshadow palette and lipsticks. I did end up picking this up. I also have the new reformulated buildable blur CC cream from Thrive Cosmetics, as well as a new contour powder from Haley's Beauty, the Fenty Beauty Blush Duo. I demoed this very quickly in a Sephora haul, but I thought I would really demo it more in depth for you guys. I do also have the Iconic London Blurring Primer. They also sent the tinted moisturizer with it, but it doesn't match my body right now. They sent a lighter shade, so I thought we would at least test this out. I have the Euphoria pre-game setting spray. They sent over a package as well, so I thought we would play with this. I am also going to be using the new Ruffer brushes. I am late to the party, but I just was in the Sephora sale madness when these arrived. And then I'm also going to be continuing to use the BK Beauty brushes, the new line. So I have a bunch of stuff, but it's just sort of random, so I hope you guys enjoy this video. I will link everything that I use down below in my description box, and if you're new here, I hope you stick around and subscribe. And if you like this video, Video, please give it a thumbs up and let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so I went ahead and zoomed you in and we are going to start on an eye look. I did end up picking up one of the new Lisa Eldridge eyeshadow palettes. So I ended up getting Vega. I was going to get Sorcery, but it was sold out. I didn't initially want to grab these, but then I got a little bit of FOMO. So this is what the packaging looks like. It's very compact and I do believe that you can pop these shadows out and mix and match. Also buy them um, if you want to replace a certain shade. And it does feel like a nice metal case. Now I did use this the other day and I have some thoughts. One thing I noticed is dipping into the matte shades, they almost like pick up in chunks. It's really weird. I wonder how long these will actually last just because usually when I use a palette it is more I guess powdery so I don't see like the indents whereas this is more of a creamy formula. So in this palette we have a velvet, we have seamless mattes, metallic, and then a luminous. So I want to go ahead and swatch these for you very quickly. Okay so here are the swatches of the palette. Everything swatches really nicely. What I noticed on my eyes was that these can dust away. So it's something that I feel like you really want to use a tacky base and you also want to try to not layer a ton, meaning going from light to dark. I think it would be better to put your deeper shades down, blend the edges with a lighter shade sort of vibe, because I felt like I kept losing it. Like I would apply it, blend, and then when I got it blended, everything was gone. So I feel like it's just a learning curve for me. Okay, so today I'm gonna start off with this navy shade and I'm going to just not set my eyelid. I'm gonna start applying and then I'm going to sort of blend the edges. This is much more intense than it was when I used it the other day. So I think because I had laid like two shades down and then I was trying to use this to deepen, they don't stick the best. So if you want more pigment, definitely apply to an unset lid and then sort of use a pressing motion and then blend around it. Right now we have like a wind advisory. It was storming really bad last night and Roscoe is afraid of thunder. He's afraid of like every sound. He's such a little sissy. So we ended up putting him in the bed to calm him down and then we both passed out and fell asleep. So this morning I woke up and I was like, wow, Ian's like literally snoring like a hoss. Like what's he doing? And I realized that Roscoe was just sort of snuggled up in the bed. So we, <laughs> we fell asleep. We want him to sleep in the bed, but we're afraid that he's gonna like jump down and start like eating stuff because he's still in that ornery stage where he will chew on socks and cords and really anything he, he can get into if he's bored. So that's really the only reason. But I told Ian this morning, I think, I think we've started a new habit, which we both secretly again, want him to be in the bed, so. By the way, I don't have my nails on, and it's killing me, but my nails are like ripping, like ripping because I just haven't taken care of them or given them a break in like years. So I'm trying to get them stronger. If you have any products that help, 
let me know. I have like a hardener, I think, from Sally Hansen that helps, but they definitely are just so thin and I feel like I can't do like any TikToks or up close because, you know, people just like unleash, you know, God forbid somebody doesn't have perfectly manicured nails 24 seven. Okay, so once I have a rough base down, I'm gonna go into the matte brown shade and I'm just going to use this to blend out the edges. So I'm going like right on the outer portion, just so this isn't too blue overall. Lately, I feel like I've been struggling with eyeshadow, like where to place it and where to blend like my inner corner and outer corner. And I'm not sure why. I feel like I go through stages. Like sometimes it just comes naturally and I feel like all my looks are like really nice. And then there's times like this when I'm like, what am I doing? Okay, hopefully to blend out those edges, I'm gonna go in with the lightest shade. This one is very light. So it's not gonna give you a ton of color payoff. So I'm just gonna use this to buff those edges out pretty much up to my brow bone. Okay, and then once I have that down, I'm gonna take the brush I used to conceal under my brow and I'm just going to lightly go over it. So whatever concealer is on the brush will help blend. Okay, so normally at this stage, I would go in with the shimmers, but I noticed when I used this the other day that by the time I got my smoky black like shadow on, it was sort of everywhere faded away. So I'm gonna go in to the black first and I'm gonna use a refer 23 and I'm going to smoke this on my lash line. There was quite a bit of fallout when I did this the other day, which is pretty typical. And I'm gonna start smoking this out into like a wing. I always sort of struggle with the shape. I'm trying to, instead of hold my brush like this, hold it like downwards, just for this outer portion, which I feel like helps get that shape. And then I'm gonna use one of the new brushes from the Ruffer set. This is the 34, it's like a tiny pencil brush. And I'm just gonna dip into that black and just use this to make sure that I have that depth across the lash line. And I can even use it to just sort of perfect. Okay, so I have a rough shape going on. I know I look rough. There's fallout all over. This always happens to me when I do like a smoky wing. So I'm just gonna take this baby wipe and clean up underneath. Okay, so I just had to get Roscoe from the backyard. He is being a little ornery today, but I'm gonna go back in to that navy shade, and I wanna just use this to smoke on the outer corner into the liner that I did. And then I'm just gonna take one of the brushes I used earlier, and I want to just sort of soften this outer edge, pulling out, I feel like my house is literally gonna like blow over. It's like super windy. All right, so now I wanna go into the shimmer. I, I have that Rudolph nose again. I don't know what is going on. I think it's cause I was outside, but I'm gonna go in to the metallic in this palette and I'm just gonna use my finger. This feels really creamy. And what I'm gonna do is apply this across the lid and it's okay if I go over the black because I'm just going to fix that anyways. So I'm gonna go back in with the black, mostly on the outer corner, just so we don't lose that definition. And then now I'm gonna go in with the sort of topper. This is called a luminous shadow. So it definitely has some pigment. It's not like the Makeup by Mario, but it's just a little bit more intense and sparkly. So I'm gonna put this like right in the center and I'm just gonna pat it in just gives a little bit more of a pop. Okay, so I went ahead and put on some outer corner lashes. I'm not sure what they are because I had already used them, but I wanna go in with this Iconic London Underglow Blurring Primer. This says that it has skincare ingredients that hydrate and nourish, 
Pores appear instantly blurred, skin smooth, and excess shine under control. That's kind of interesting because I think this has like a glow to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and shake it up. It comes in a dropper form. I did already apply moisturizer, but I wonder what this looks like. Okay, so it's very thin and it definitely has a subtle glow. It's not as glowy as I thought it would be. I didn't know that this claimed to help with shine control, so we'll have to see because I am going in with that Thrive Cosmetic CC Cream, which is pretty glowy on me. This smells like baby powder, like a very soft baby powder. I don't see any like blurring of my pores right off the bat. It feels nice and hydrating, but I'm curious how my skin will look once I get my foundation on. Okay, so now I wanna go in with my base. This is the Thrive Cosmetics Buildable Blur CC Cream, but they changed it and added an SPF 40. I think that's the only difference. I looked on the website and I'm on their Instagram now. It says reintroducing, graduating from 18 to 28 shades now with SPF 40. So I used this a long time ago and I actually really liked it. It reminded me very much of like the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream or the IT Cosmetics. Maybe a little bit less coverage, but I have the shade 150 Light, which is what they sent over, which definitely looks warm. They also changed the packaging. It used to have a pump and now it just squeezes out. So the texture is thick, but I remember liking this, so I'm interested to try this new formula. I'm gonna go in with the BK Beauty 109. This is from the new Core Extension. This might be a little light, but we're just gonna have to make it work. Okay, I definitely smell like a sunscreen scent. Coverage is looking like a medium, but I feel like I'm having some smearing. This brush from the new BK Beauty extension line is one of my favorites. It's a little bit more forgiving than the 101, which is like the foundation brush. So it's like a smaller version and it has a little bit more flexibility. But it's really nice to like get around your brows or even concealer. So this feels like it's just sitting on top of my skin. I'm gonna zoom you in. And I can smell that sunscreen, so I'm wondering if it's like the addition of them adding the sunscreen to this. So I'm gonna take a damp beauty sponge and try to like press this in. I feel like it's just sort of looking a little bit heavy or like smearing. Okay, so this is what the Thrive Cosmetics CC Cream looks like. The coverage is good. It definitely has a sunscreen scent to it. And I noticed that it worked better, I think, with a sponge. It's one of those, like, it doesn't want to stick to my nose. It does look like it has more of a glowy, natural finish. Definitely not matte by any means. So quite hydrating. Don't really think that my skin looks smooth per se, but I won't know until I put powder on. So I wanna go in with my Too Faced Concealer. This is probably gonna be a little deep because the shade from the Thrive is a little light for my self-tan. I'm also gonna take a little bit of my Kim She Chic Concealer just to clean up the edges. And to blend this out, I'm gonna use the BK Beauty 110 from the new set. This one and the 109 were the two standouts for me. Just because most days I don't want to like wet a sponge to do my concealer. And I found this is like pretty perfect. It's not too small and it's not too big. It just blends really nicely. So to set my T-zone, I'm gonna use my Maybelline Fit Me in Fair. And I just wanna make sure that I have the creasing out. I'm just gonna press this into the T-zone. Okay, so I wanna go ahead and finish off the lower lash line. I'm gonna go into the palette and I think I'm gonna use the navy shade with a refer 26. Put a little bit on the outer half of my lower lash line. I get quite a bit of fallout with this formula. And then I am gonna go back in to the black shade just with that brush I used before. 
just to deepen. And then I am gonna take the Luminous Topper shade and I just wanna put this on the lower lash line. Okay, because I feel like I need it, I'm gonna go in with my Nabla liner in six, which is a navy color. Okay, and then I'm going back in with that shimmery shade. Okay, so now I wanna add some dimension to the face. So I'm gonna go in with the Haley's Beauty Resculpt, and this is a contour powder in medium. I just got this in PR. I feel like I'm looking really blanked out. I'm gonna use the 112 from BK Beauty. So this is pretty powdery. I have fallout under my eye, by the way. Like stained. That palette just has a lot of fallout. So this seems to have more of a like cooler red undertone rather than like an ashy gray. I'm not loving this foundation, by the way. Okay, so up close, I feel like that powder lifted off this foundation and I don't think it's the powder. I think it's just the foundation. I have like these cakey areas where it's like lifting and gathering like right up here. I have like blotching right here. So I don't think that's gonna be a product that's gonna work with like a lot of makeup on, but I just wanted to test it. So I'm just gonna go in next with bronzer and I hope that I can salvage this. So for bronzer, I don't have anything new. I'm just gonna use my Jouer powder in dark. I mean, I've used this a ton and I'm gonna use the new brush, the Refer 37 and Hopefully this doesn't lift any more of that base. It could be the primer mixed with the base or one of the other, so I'll have to keep testing. Okay, so for blush, I wanted to demo the new Fenty Beauty Double Cheeked Up Blush Duo for holiday. I've really been enjoying this and I hope she comes out with more in this duo. So I'm just gonna take my sponge I'll start off with the lighter pink shade. This formula is pretty easy to work with. It's not like overpowering or overly like dewy or matte. So it's definitely pigmented, but I really like went in there. But this side's like a really pretty pink. And then I'm gonna go over it and just calm it down. This is probably not the best choice with this eye look, but. And then I'm gonna go in to the deeper shade and then I'll see if this changes it or like grounds it a little bit more, but it's really not overly deep. It's just like a little bit more of a deeper pink. So you can see how pretty the colors are with this eye look. Probably again, not the best, but I'm just gonna blend it out. Sometimes with trying new makeup, you just have to look a little bit wild so for highlighter i'm just gonna stick with my favorite from dior and i'm gonna actually mix the pink and the white since we have cool tones on the eyes i'm gonna line my lips quickly with the abh deep taupe just because i want to keep it in the cool color family Okay, so for lipstick, I have two lipsticks from Lisa Eldridge that I purchased. So I have the Velvet in Intrigue and then Velvet in Fawn. Everybody raves about these, so I want to swatch these and give them a try. So this first one is Intrigue, which is like a light pinky beige. And then I think I'm gonna use the other one because I think it'll go better with this look. This is in Velvet Fawn. This one is like a smidge more cool toned. So that's the one I'm gonna go in with. Feels really nice. So this is what the Velvet Fawn looks like. It feels really nice and comfortable. I think the one thing about her lipsticks is they do look a little bit darker and I'm somebody that likes really light colors. Like this color's fine, but I usually go for a really light shade. So that's why I don't gravitate towards her lipsticks, but the formula feels really nice pigmented. It's very thin. 
So we'll see how this wears and how I like it over time. But it's definitely a little bit more cool toned and deeper than my normal nude that I always go for. And lastly, I almost forgot, but I wanna try out this Euphoria Skin Moisturizing Setting Spray. So I think you can put this on before or after makeup. I've used it once before. This brand is now available at Ulta. Uh, and they sent me a care package, so I'm going to try some of their products out. But let's just see. I don't smell a scent, and the mister was pretty nice from what I can remember, so let's go ahead and just coat the skin. So the mister is nice, like a lot comes out at once, but I don't have any like droplets or anything. It doesn't really have a scent that I can detect. Definitely feel like it is giving me hydration, which I might have went a little bit crazy on the forehead area. And I can feel the extra spray that got on my shirt is a little bit tacky, so I would assume that this has glycerin in it. So I want to keep trying it out. I'll try it out more, maybe like before makeup. I don't think that it disrupted my makeup at all, but I definitely have a little bit of that sticky feel, and it definitely did give me some glow without being greasy. So this may be a good option for those of you that have like really dry skin. Okay guys, so this is the look I came up with using some new products. I feel like I had a pretty strange mix of different tones and just products in general. And to be honest, I'm not loving this look at all, but here we are. I wanna give you my thoughts on each product. So the Lisa Eldridge palette. I'm a little just kind of so-so about this solely because I do find this to have a little bit of a learning curve. And what I mean by that is I don't find this to be very buildable. It can dust away. So it's almost like if you start off with the light shade, then go up a shade and then try to add this for depth, it's just too powdery, it's going to kick away. So I feel like you definitely want to not set your base and also go in with the deepest shade first and then blend around. I also find it weird how these look like I've used them for, you know, months and I've only used this palette twice. The mattes specifically just look like they're crumbling and I feel like I have to really dig my brush in, especially to like these two shades to really get pigment. The topper shade is beautiful. It has some pigment behind it, so it's not like a straight glitter. And the shimmer, I feel like is nice and creamy. I just feel like I want the ability to build up a look. If I want to take it super smoky and deep, I want to do that without having to not set my base or start with the deeper shade or baby it. When I used this the other day, I applied these shimmers. When I went to like do the smoky liner, the shimmer was just all over my face, basically just dusted away. Then I had to reapply it. And then as I was blending, it just kept dusting away. So this is probably a formula that would benefit from possibly like a glitter glue or something like that. So I don't think that it's bad. I didn't have an issue blending. Like I didn't feel like anything was sticking, grabbing, or hard to blend. It just felt like I really had to be strategic in placing and then not blending too much because then I would just lose all the color payoff. So I think it's a cute little palette. I did get a ton of fallout, by the way, like a ton of fallout. So that's another thing I noticed, especially with the black shade and the navy. So for me, it's just kind of pretty, but do I have the patience to you know work with it? Most days, probably not. Moving on to the Iconic London Blurring Primer. This is interesting because it definitely has a sort of glowy vibe, hydrating, almost like a serum. It has a very minimal amount I would say of like glow, but I don't know if I can tell if this really blurred. I did like the texture of this. It was very lightweight and really like a lightweight serum, but it almost had like that soft, smooth feel when you blended it out. So I'm not really sure if this would be like a targeted pore primer, like the Glowish I can use all over my face, but it really does a good job right around my nose area. This may be something that I would use almost like a hydrating base and then go in with like my glowish right here. So I'll keep trying it out, but I really don't know my full thoughts yet just because I did use 
a new foundation to me, which is the Thrive Cosmetics. So this is definitely heavily sunscreen smelling, which doesn't really bother me, but it's just something I noticed. This is a thicker product good coverage. I feel like there's something heavy about this. When I applied it with the brushes, it was just sitting on top of my skin, smearing back and forth, not wanting to stick to my nose. I do feel like a beauty blender helped sort of soften the look. But when I look up close, there's parts that are like lifted or just kind of caked up. I noticed when I went in with the Haley's Beauty Powder, it was lifting. So I feel like this is a product I would use with more just like cream products overall and minimal powder and we all know how much I love my powder so I just don't know if this is gonna be you know a favorite for me I'm gonna have to keep trying out this Haley's Beauty powder I do like that even though it's a contour it definitely is more of like a red tone rather than the ashy sort of gray tone. Now it all depends on your preference, your skin tone, what you like. This one is more of like a red tone, cool bronzer contour. So I'll have to keep trying it. I have a hard time really even knowing my thoughts on this because it did start lifting when I applied it and I am 99.9% .9 sure it is this, but I'll keep testing this out and update. Hands down, my favorite product of the day is the Fenty Beauty Cream Blush Duo. I really hope she comes out with different colors I love this. I think it works beautifully. You saw that I really just blended it all over. Then I went over it with a puff and really softened it, and it didn't lift. It's super easy to use. It's not overly pigmented, but it's not sheer. And of course, I love the pink shade, but I don't think it's too baby doll pink that it's not wearable for a lot of people. So I really am hoping that she does release this format with different colors, like a huge range, because I think it would be a hit. Now, in terms of the Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, I think the packaging is super luxe, and I do like the shade that I use today. It's definitely a little bit more cool toned than I typically go for. I would usually put like a really light gloss like the Give Beauty or something like that in the center or maybe my Tom Ford lipstick and blush new. I just like the brown lip liner with the nude lip. I just feel like that's what I look best in. So I feel like this shade is just a smidge deeper than I'm used to, but I will still get use out of it. The formula feels really light. I can see how she says velvet because it almost has like a soft powdery feel but it's still creamy. It doesn't feel drying at all, but it doesn't have like a high shine finish. So I think these are beautiful. I just have a hard time on her website and just trying to figure out what shades would work for me. The two shades that I picked up look to be the lightest shades. So I'm wondering if she's ever gonna come out with like some really, really, really light shades, almost like concealer lips, because that's usually my vibe. I'm still absolutely loving the BK Beauty Extension Brush Kit. These two are my top picks. There's a bunch of eye brushes, which I really like. They're great if you have like hooded eyes or you have really small eyelids. But this brush, the 109, it is so nice for foundation, concealer. I could see this being incredible for cream bronzer, cream blush. It's a little bit more forgiving than the 101, meaning it has a little bit more flexibility. So you can really stamp in and you can really target that, you know, coverage where you want it. So I really like this. And then the 110 I love as well. This brush is perfect for doing your under eye because it's not too small. A lot of the times I feel like concealer brushes are very small, which I understand for targeted concealer. But when you really want to blend it out, I find sometimes the really small brushes are almost too small that I can't really get a good blend. This one I feel like you can pat but then you can also swipe and it just blurs it out beautifully. So these two are the standouts for me from the kit. I'm gonna need more of these because these would be brushes that I would use literally every day. And then lastly my thoughts on this Euphoria moisturizing spray. Definitely has glycerin because I feel sticky. Like my shirt feels sticky, even my hands, which I really am not a huge fan of. So this may be something that would be better before your makeup, just to give you that nice hydration. Like maybe when you're still, you know, in your bathroom after a shower, you just spritz this on. I could see this being good for someone that really has dry skin or you like that glowy look. I do feel like it gave me a little bit of a glow to my skin, but I don't have like droplets or anything like that. I just don't love the stickiness of it, but this is pretty common in setting sprays that have like glycerin or are hydrating. So I'll keep trying that out, but so far I like the effect of it, I just don't like the feel.
Okay guys, so I think that is everything for this trying new makeup video. I know I had a random mix of products, but I did still wanna demo these, especially the Lisa Eldridge because a lot of you were asking about it. I also wanted to say thank you. I was gonna chat about this and then, I don't know, I get so lost in the makeup and questioning if I should even bring it up, but I haven't been posting as much and I took two weeks off, then I uploaded and I was like, I'm back and then I haven't uploaded for a week again. I'm dealing with some health issues, not mental health, but just like health issues, and it's really personal, so I just don't feel comfortable at this point opening up about it. It's something that I've dealt with since I was 20, but I, I don't know, I've never talked about it. I've almost just kind of like put it out of my mind and acted like, you know, it's not something I had to deal with, but Recently, I feel like it's been flaring and I'm actually going to see a specialist soon to hopefully get some help, but I've just been um, in pain, not feeling good. I just haven't felt good. So when I don't feel good, it's really hard to get on camera and honestly just wanna put makeup on because I've been just wearing sweatpants, hair up, no makeup. I just haven't felt well overall. I have been considering doing a video talking about you know, my health issues. I think it would help a lot of women but it is deeply personal and it's just not something I'm ready to talk about yet. I've also been trying not to share as much of my personal life because I don't want it to constantly be, you know, negative, 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 being someone that struggles with mental health and anxiety and, you know, when my dogs pass and all that. So I almost put a wall up because I'm afraid to open up for fear that people are going to twist it into and that's really sad, but it's the internet and so I feel like I've almost closed off and I feel like almost guilty. I, I miss my subscribers and chatting with you guys and I am an open book, but there's certain things that are really serious or private or personal and I just, I feel like I'm afraid to just open the floodgates and just like lay it out. So I don't know, I'm struggling with that. If I'm ready and when I'm ready, I will, you know, open up about it more, but just wanted to say thank you guys for just understanding that I'm not posting as much. I usually would give an explanation, but again, I feel like I'm sort of stepping back and almost protecting myself. Like, uh, I don't need to tell everybody exactly what's going on if I don't upload for a week or two. So I appreciate you guys just hanging in there with me. Hopefully I can get back to uploading regularly. I hope so. I feel like I'm just like going crazy wanting to, but I just don't feel well. So I am hopeful that I will start feeling better soon and then I can start uploading two to three times a week like I always would. I may also do some vlogging. I don't have the most exciting life, but when I did it before, you guys really loved it. So let me know if you guys want to see some vlogs sprinkled in to my makeup content. But as always, I will link everything that I used down below in my description box. If you're new here, I hope you stick around and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys again so much for watching my videos, and I'll see you in the next one.